Welcome to Gearbox Labs. My name is Isabel. I'm here with Peter and today we are going to work with digital designs using Tinkercad. So we are going to sign in into our account and going to the main page to build the new project. So we are going to circuits and uh, we are going to create a new one. This time we are going to use uh, servos and potentiometers. The first thing is going to be changing the name of our project. So that way Tinkercad is going to save our project. So we are going to the search area looking for the microcontroller and uh, we will need as well a breadboard. No, I'm, see, I'm, going I'm going to turn it. Okay, we're going to rotate the microcontroller so it's going to be um, better to, to do this way because of the amount of wires we are going to use. The next one is going to be the breadboard and we will need uh, two potentiometers and two servos, micro servos, yeah, all right, I like that. The next thing is going to be changing the value of our potentiometers to 10 kilo ohms. And then the next thing is placing the potentiometers on the breadboard. It's going to be important in here to rotate those potentiometers because uh, the, of the wiring. It's going to be easier to see the connections. Okay. The next thing is going to be addition of 5 volts and ground to the breadboard. So we are going to look for the connections of 5 volts to the red section of the breadboard or the positive sign, changing the cable to red and then we are looking for ground and this is going to be to the negative side or blue section so that way we have um, the breadboard ready. The next step the connection of the potentiometers. So we are going to start with the left leg of the first potentiometer and this one goes to ground. Then we have here a second leg which is the signal. Signal goes to the analog side of the microcontroller since we are going to work with uh, many numbers, uh, the potentiometers are actually go from 0 to 1023, so we are going to connect them to analog. And uh, the third leg goes to 5 volts. The procedure is going to be the same for the second potentiometer, only the signal goes to analog one. So next step is going to be the connection of the servos. Servos, they have polarity, so we need to click on the pins to find the connection. So the first one is a signal, and we are going to look for the digital side of the microcontroller, but a number with a tilde. So in here, we are going to connect this one to number 10. Then the next one is power or 5 volts, so we are going to use a cable that goes to the red section. We are going to change this one to red. 
and the last one is going to be ground. We are going to do the same with the second micro servo. Only the signal changes to 9. That's a lot of wires. Yeah, that is the reason we connected first 5 volts and ground and so that we can use all these uh, connections for for the wiring. So the next thing is going to be uh, the testing of the microcontroller just to see if... Uh, I didn't short it out. <laughs> if we don't have problems. Yeah, no. Okay, great. Great. So everything is okay. So stopping the simulation and going to the code text, we will continue erasing the code. We are going to start typing ours. We are going to use in this case something that we call libraries, like this one. This one is actually a big file, so by typing only that line, we are saving lots of lines in coding. Then we are going to include the integers and how many servos do we have. So we have the first one. Then the integers with the connections of our potentiometers. And that is a zero, not the letter capital O. That's a zero. Yeah, a zero, yeah. And I left one number one. Oh, I forgot on the other line, a semicolon. And then in there, we need to add the integers, the values for the two components. And basically are all the variables that we are going to use. So we are going to the setup. Opening a bracket. And then we need to indicate the connection of the two servos. That library gives us that attach function that we're seeing here. It adds a power to our coding capability. All right, so we are closing void setup and opening void loop. As soon as we finish with void setup, the last step is going to be the void loop. In here, we need to include the values of the potentiometers. So are going to be as a um, analog read, including the variables. Okay. The next line is going to be the mapping. This one is very important because in here we have a um, the potentiometer and the the numbers at the moment we are a So the next line is going to be the mapping. This line is very important because in here we have the information regarding the potentiometers, servos, and its motion. 
we will find the numbers from 0 to 1023 that indicates the complete rotation of the potentiometer. Or we have another set which is 0 and 79, which is uh, the servo motion in the angles. Angle 0 to 179. Since we have two servos, we need to add a second mapping. And then we need to include as well the servo connections and the values connected to the value of the potentiometer. We need to add a delay. In this case, we are going to use 15 milliseconds, and this one is the timing of uh, the servo uh, to move. In this case, it's going to be kind of fast. We can change those numbers uh, for future projects. So let's review what we've done here, because there's, there's a lot going on. All the way at the beginning, we established the library, and then our variables. In the void setup we attached to pin 9 and 10 each servo. In the loop we're doing three different things. The first thing we're doing is we're getting the value of the turning, the rotation of the potentiometers. The second thing that we're doing is we're taking that value that rotation of the potentiometer and mapping it. We're making a conversion essentially from the rotation of the potentiometer to a degree measurement for turning the servo. And we're doing that for each servo. Well then you have to actually send that degree rotation over to the servo to make it turn. And that's what we're doing in the my servo uh, write statements. And I can see here that I need to add one and two. Because we have two we servos. We have two servos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It has to be parallel. So I think we're ready. Hopefully it all works. So for starting the simulation, we can close the code so we can see the full project and starting the simulation. So if it works, the servo should initially do their turning. Uh -huh. And then the next thing we have to do is test it. By so, clicking on the uh, potentiometer and rotating, so we will see how the servo is moving. Pretty cool. What kinds of changes would you do to this project? So in here, we can add more servos, more potentiometers. We, we can change the degree of the servo in here. So it can go from 5 to 90 or depending what type of project you are building. So let's do that first. Let's change it to half a rotation for this one. And then we'll change this one to a, a different rotation of 45 degrees, but starting at 90 and going to 135. Now you can see that by changing the value of input right away, both servos are at, at different angles. And then I can rotate this one. And, it's gonna be on and you can see that it can only turn 90 degrees. This servo, I can only turn 45 with the full rotation. So we've done a different mapping. The servos literally behave differently. Why would you do that? These kind of uh, prototypes are used for building um, robotic hands, legs, head of a robot or even the robotic fingers. 
that we need to use different angles. Excellent. So we'll stop the simulation, go back to the code. The delay is also important. Yeah, it is. Uh, again, depending on the type of project. This one, if we do, I don't know, a change about, let's say, um, 200 milliseconds, let's see how the servos behave. So the servo is going to move slowly. This type of delay can be used for opening and closing the windows of um, a greenhouse. And on a robotic arm, you won't, wouldn't necessarily want it to open really fast because yes. you could literally shoot whatever you're holding right out of your hand. You have to be kind of gentle. Isabel and I want to thank you for viewing this tutorial on Tinkercad. Isabel and I challenge you to make changes to the, the project. 